President Trump's control of the Republican Party is on full display this week, with many congressional Republicans defending his racist tweets. Why then would any Republican take the chance of running against the president in a primary? Well, let's find out from our next guest who's considering doing just that. And joining us now is Mark Sanford. He's, of course, the former Republican governor and congressman from South Carolina. Good morning, Governor. Good morning to you. Why would you ever want to re-engage with this blood sport, particularly at a time when so many of your fellow Republicans are so aligned with President Trump? That's a good question. I struggle with that uh, on, on any given morning here. Uh, uh, but I guess it boils down to this. Um, I think we're walking our way toward the most predictable financial crisis in the history of our nation. If you look at our numbers in terms of debt and deficits, we're having zero conversation on that very front. I think the Republican Party, of which I've been a part for a long time, has abandoned its, its conversation even on the importance of financial reality. And so I'm just struck by if, if, if nobody says something, we're going to wait till the next presidential election cycle to have this needed conversation on where we go next as a country on debt, spending, and the deficits that are accruing. Here are the numbers, and they are jaw-dropping. You are right. So in 2019, the deficit is projected to be $1 trillion. The national debt is projected to be $22.5 trillion. I remember when John McCain used to say that Congress was, you know, spending like a drunken sailor on leave. But now you don't hear Republicans saying that. What's happened? to all the deficit hawks that were in the Republican Party? Well, to your earlier point, we're in a cult of personality right now. I mean, Trump is a very, very strong personality, and nobody wants to be on the receiving end of a bad Trump tweet. But it's incumbent upon all of us uh, to simply go out and say the truth, which is we can't stay on the train that we're on. You know, the billion-dollar number, excuse me, trillion-dollar number that you just mentioned you know, that, that's the tip of the iceberg. That presumes that we stay in this low interest environment that we're in right now. You know, if interest rates were to go up by just one point, it adds $160 billion of spending. And so you'll hear a lot of debate in Congress over $4 billion or $5 billion or $10 billion or $20 billion. $160 billion, that's more than we spend on uniformed personnel in the military. All 2 million people, 1.2 million active duty and 800,000 reservists, with a one-point rise in interest rates. So there are a lot of groups out there saying, no, it's not going to you know, look at one. We could actually be looking at $2 trillion deficits over the next couple of years, which would be crippling to our economy, to the jobs that people need, and frankly, to our, our currency, to, to a whole lot of things that are fundamental yeah. to people building a life. But, uh, Governor, haven't you already tried running against President Trump in one form or another? I mean, you were one of the only Republicans who would criticize openly President Trump, and you lost your congressional seat. So why would this time be any different? Well, that's why I've been quiet for the last six months. I mean, you know, I, I, again, I was at the receiving end of one of those tough Trump tweets and a number of them. Uh, it didn't work out well for me in a congressional race. But this is a much bigger conversation. And, you know, I've had conversations with my son. I've had conversations with my friends. And their point is, you know, I don't know if this thing will materialize or not. I've said I'll give 30 days to give it a look and see if people and energy and resources come my way. And if so, I'll go. And if not, I won't. But, but you know, if we don't speak up, if we don't find ways of speaking up, we're going to be in a world of hurt. I mean, you know, it's telling to me that the, you know, the, the former, I guess, Clinton chief of staff, Erskine Bowles, said, we're walking away toward, again, the most predictable financial crisis in the history of man. It's telling to me that Admiral Mike Mullen, who was the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, has said, you know, you know, when asked, what's the biggest threat to, to the American way of life, to our civilization? He answers, not the Chinese and the Taliban, but the American debt. We have a profound math problem coming our way, and it's not our grandkids' issue or our kids' issue. This is coming in the next couple of years. We're now in the longest economic recovery in American history. These fault lines are going to show up soon. We do not have the chance to wait four years to have this debate. On a personal note, are you worried that if you get into the race that President Trump will bring up your own marital 
infidelity at every turn and that that will take a personal toll? Well, I'm sure he will, and the Republican Party in South Carolina already has. Uh, and so, look, I, I, I mean, I don't know how many ways I can express this. I am an imperfect person saved by God's grace. End of story. But the reality is that we're all imperfect, and we all have things or chapters of a life we wish we could push rewind play on. And so if he wants to rehash that, he'll rehash that. But I know that if I'm to be really truthful with my four boys and to friends out there, it's incumbent upon one of us to say, let's raise the white flag and say, we got to try a different approach with regard to debt deficit and government spending. I am in perfect messenger, no doubt about it. And that's part of why I've waited over the last year since my primary loss last June. I hoped the Kasich would go or the governor of Maryland would go or somebody would go, but nobody has. And again, friends kept coming to me over the last couple months saying, look, just give it a try for 30 months and see what happens. And so that's what I'm doing. All right. Former Governor Mark Sanford, thank you very much for explaining it all to us here on New Day. Yes, ma'am.